Greetings again from the Orange Hotel here in sunny Beijing. It is Monday morning. As you can see, I am sporting the Disney look today. Um, they're not going to allow me to have spiky hair. And today being our first major day of orientation, um, I'm doing the comb over. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, this weekend, uh, we decided uh, that we're probably through the jet lag, which is quite nice. We woke up at a decent time this morning. And with a free weekend ahead of us, uh, we decided to get out and explore. Sometimes when you're in a new place, that's the best thing to do is just to dive right in and figure out the subway system, figure out transportation, and start to get a lay of the land around the city. So knowing that it was a Saturday and that uh, diving maybe straight into the Forbidden City uh, would be a little more crowded, we decided to go ahead and find a place that was a little more off the beaten path. So I pulled out uh, my trusty Lonely Planet guidebook. Thank you so much to uh, John and Danny Crosby for giving us this. So we decided to go to an older part of the city where there are hutong, which are basically old alleyways that have a combination of residential uh, and commercial shops in them. Uh, when we got out the train station, the entrance to this hutong, which was in the Nanluangyujiang neighborhood, and I'm probably mispronouncing that, it's a more famous uh, hutong in the city. And these are some of the older, more interesting neighborhoods uh, that are a little more evocative of old China, from my understanding. There were lots of shops. There were places you could buy food. You could get street food. You could get ice cream, souvenirs. The list really goes on. And at the end, we came out at the bell tower and drum tower. These must be some of the tallest structures in Beijing. At least it seemed like it. They were originally built in the 13th century. The bell tower is pretty tall and you can climb up inside of it through a very very steep staircase. Wow, those were some steep stairs, were they not Vic? Steep stairs. And we were very much gripping the handrails but when you get to the top you get this beautiful view of Beijing and you can go all around the tower and see it from all angles. You really get a sense of the older city being in the center surrounded on all sides by the skyscrapers in the more modern city. The 600 year old 63 ton bell and both the drum and the bell tower uh, were built as timekeepers. If you can imagine your clock tower on the town square, this would have been the clock tower for old China, where people would manually go in and beat the drums and ring the big bell on the hour or the half hour to mark the time for all the citizens. What we read was that this uh, bells and drums could be heard for miles outside of Beijing. So being up so high, being so large, and being so noisy, uh, it helped keep time for the whole area. The bell tower had a display of timekeeping implements, which were kind of interesting. Uh, the fact that you could keep time based on a certain length of incense burning down or a mar notched candle burning down, or even some water as it passed from one container uh, trickled down into another. And then in the drum tower, we actually saw a drumming demonstration. Then uh, we wandered through and came to a large lake in the middle of the city, which seemed to be a very expensive, nice area. Lots of cute cafes and shops surrounding the lake, and lots of people out on boats in the middle enjoying the day. It was pretty busy, uh, clearly a very popular place for the locals on the weekend. And we just kind of got lost in the alleyways for the rest of the day. The very next day, uh, that would be Sunday, that was yesterday, we decided we we're going to get a little more practical and we we're going to go out and try to find some implements, some supplies that were missing, some things that we couldn't pack with us on the baggage. And I read and heard that there are Walmarts in Beijing. I thought that might be possibly the cheapest and easiest place for us to go get some things without having to haggle or do anything like that. So found out that there was a Walmart, about 40 minute train ride right on our line. Sure enough, the minute you walk out uh, towards one of the exits, there is a big sign pointing to Walmart. I'm gonna talk more about the Walmart in another video. Later that evening, uh, we decided we would go out to see Captain America uh, in 4D. Now this is really weird because the last time I saw a 4D movie was in Seoul and it was the previous Captain America, Winter Soldier. So it was a new experience for most of us, uh, but the second time I'd been to a 4D movie. Now the 4D movie is pretty cool. Uh, the seats move, there are flashes in the theater, there's wind that they blow at you at certain scenes. They jerk you around quite a bit as there's punching and action going on and drift around in your seats as the camera's swooping through things and the seat vibrates when there's a a motorcycle or a car going through. It's, it's pretty interesting and, and a lot of fun. I don't know if I'd want to do it for every movie, but for a big action movie like this, it was pretty cool. And we really did enjoy the film. Uh, it was shown in English. Many of the showings that day were, 
uh, with the Chinese subtitles. So it seems like it's going to be pretty easy for us to see English movies uh, here in China. So thoughts on this weekend. Um, I'd say that right now we're starting to feel a little silly about not knowing some Chinese. Obviously, just like Japan, we came here without knowing the language at all. It wasn't a requirement of our jobs because we're going to be teaching English uh, in immersion style in the classroom uh, to children. And we are also going to have uh, a Chinese assistant there who's going to be able to help uh, with uh, any language issues that may arise with, uh, with dealing with the children in the classroom. But of course, uh, you need to really know the local language at least a little bit to get around. Some of the younger folks seem to understand English at least a little bit, um, though they may be reluctant to use it. Um, for example, went to McDonald's last night and uh, tried to order a large Coke, and there were several people behind the counter. It was a pretty jovial atmosphere, actually. Uh, and the woman behind the cash register, uh, she was young, but she seemed a little embarrassed to be helping me, um, maybe a little nervous about whether she'd be able to understand me. Just like I was nervous <laughs> being able to order what I wanted to order, the Coke Zero and not the regular Coke. So after some hand motions and some things, uh, we finally got it. But then when she said the total to me, uh, embarrassingly, I don't even know numbers yet. And, and that's really inconvenient. And uh, for some reason, there was no readout in front of me. I think it was blocked by a sign. So she held up one and one, and I thought she was telling me it was two. Uh, and then eventually one of the guys, uh, who, one of the younger guys, uh, turned around and said, oh, 11, 11. And they were teasing her for not knowing 11. And I smiled and said, thank you. And one of the guys there said, uh, oh, my Lady Gaga. <laughs> uh, an expression I never heard before, definitely not in the United States. You know, when you're faced with a situation where you're in a country where you don't know the language and you need to work through it, um, this isn't unfamiliar to us, but it's always a challenge. There's always a little bit of embarrassment um, involved in that, which is just more impetus to learn the language faster. But it's amazing how much you can get through and you can communicate if you really want to. And we found that the Chinese people here have been really accommodating, really willing to help us, even if they have to pass us to two or three people. Getting a razor, uh, making sure that I got an electric razor and the right one uh, sent me to two or three different people and lots of hand gestures, a little bit of English here and there, and me pulling out my Chinese phrase book. When we had lunch in the food court at Walmart, we also had another interesting language experience. There was a, a stall there in the food court where you could get dumplings. Uh, these dumplings were like 15 on a plate. They were boiled. You could get your choice of many different fillings uh, for 15 kwai, which is like two dollars and thirty cents. So we got two plates full of dumplings uh, and that for the three of us was plenty for lunch. So lunch for 460 for three people was great. But uh, we had a hard time communicating to him uh, exactly how we wanted the dumplings and the man was super nice um, and really eager to help and he knew a couple English, a little bit of English and some English words. But when it came time to pay I realized that you didn't just pay the people at the stall. There was some kind of system for paying a main cashier and then I don't know, getting a receipt from the stall or buying a card and scanning it. I wasn't exactly sure. So I went to the cashier and uh, tried to communicate with her and ask her how to pay. And she knew what I was asking, but I had a hard time understanding the process back from her. There were a couple other uh, people there and a younger woman, probably in her early 30s or late 20s, was interested in helping. So she motioned uh, a person over and it was her son, <laughs> like her nine-year-old son. And uh, we all had a pretty good laugh that it was her nine-year-old son who could come over and actually speak really good English with me. Um, he wasn't hesitant at all. He just asked me, oh, you want dumplings? Okay, uh, you need to pay her and uh, you buy a card and then after you use the card to pay. His English was fantastic. I was really quite impressed and it was really cute. So this is just something to think about, you know, in your own country when... You see people who obviously don't know the language very well and you might feel frustrated and might want to say something like, oh, well, if you're here, learn the language. It's important to know that people are here for different reasons and people have different backgrounds and language acquisition is really pretty hard. It takes a lot of effort and time. And it's amazing how well you can get by without knowing the language, which makes it even more difficult to really immerse yourself and take that effort. We're going to be doing that, um, but I guess I would say to you, be a little more patient with the folks uh, in your own neighborhood who maybe don't have as great a grasp of English. Be willing to help them out and be a little understanding uh, that it takes time and, and that as much embarrassment as you might feel uh, not being able to communicate with them, imagine how they feel uh, trying to communicate with you. Anyway, we're going to go to our training today and I will be posting more videos uh, as uh, the week goes on. 
If you're checking this video out on YouTube and want to see more, please click that subscribe link down in the lower left corner so that you can subscribe to these videos and see more updates as we get them. Until then, see you later.